hello there, you know who I am. What do you have when you have Santa, an Instant Pot, and some soybeans from Iowa? Well, you get some magic. You get natto. It's a wonderful fermented food, and I'm going to show you how I make it right now. An Instant Pot, Iowa soybeans, and Santa. What could go wrong? Coming up next. Here was where we begin. We begin with my Instant Pot my favorite kitchen toy, oh, tool, sorry. We have a bowl, could be metal, could be any other content, could be plastic, anything. We got some soybeans. I've got my, my chopsticks, which are optional. And I've got a spoon, which is not optional. I've got a half cup measure. I've got a seven cup. Uh, this is a Pyrex bowl. It needs to be able to handle some heat, but not a lot of heat. Another smaller Pyrex bowl, which could be a cup or any container. Just need a few fluid ounces of the drained liquid after a little bit. I'll show you about that. With my Instant Pot came this rack, which we'll need that when we're doing our ferment. I've got some round toothpicks, but it could be anything that can poke holes in plastic film. And if I'm going to poke holes in plastic film, I've got to have some plastic film. And this could be any kind of wrap that you use for uh, your purposes in the kitchen. I've got a strainer and I have some soybeans. Now these are the fermented soybeans. These ones come from Japan and they're called fermented soybeans mito natto. <laughs> so take a look. This is going back in the freezer in a little bit. Yesterday I took one of the slip packages out and this is the small package that it comes. And this is what we're going to use to inoculate our soybeans to make our wonderful natto. So, yesterday I measured out some, some soybeans, and I'll show you how I did it. I took my, my soybeans that are dry. I get these from, these are from Laura Soybean in Iowa. Let's test your math skills. If I have three one half cup measures, it gives me one and a half cups. That's how much I make. You may want to make slightly less or slightly more. It's up to you. So I would normally take those one and a half cups and you notice in the bowl here that there it's pretty far down, not very, not very close to the top. But because the soybeans are going to absorb a lot of water, when I fill it with water, I fill it up to about an inch from the top. So that's important to remember. Now I'm not going to use this particular bowl right now for these soybeans because yesterday I put soybeans in and I came up with this wonderful soak overnight. So this has been soaking for about 24 hours. Now I just want to tell you what you want to look for is this white frothy stuff at the top. I don't know what that is, but I know I don't want to eat it. And the people that know about soybeans and about fermenting say it's time to discard it and then put in some more water, you know, rinse it, whatever. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back here to my kitchen. I've got my, my strainer and I'm just going to pour off this water and I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of the beans in here. And then I'm going to take that nice clean water I mentioned and I'm going to rinse my beans. And then I'm going to put them in my Instant Pot. Now that's, that's not that hard. I bet you could do that yourself if you needed to. I'll get this out of the way. I'll get these guys out of the way. And this here. And we're going to talk about how we're going to handle the beans in the pot. You notice it's way down there, yeah? So if you notice on the side of the, of the Instant Pot are some measurements. And don't worry too much about that, but just remember that you want to basically flatten out the beans, even them out, and then add water that goes about an inch above the beans. These are beans, again, that have been soaked overnight, actually more than overnight, a full 24 hours. And I'm going to add the water, and then I'm going to bring the water up above the top of the beans 
about an inch. Now, if you don't know what an inch is, the human finger has these little parts, you know, where we bend. So the part from the knuckle to the tip is pretty close to an inch. So that's the preparation to cook. I set them in the Instant Pot. Now, if you're new to Instant Pot, we need to understand the top. The top has a wonderful valve here that works. As it heats the water, it sets the valve up and then allows it to come to pressure. And we're going to cook under pressure. But if we push this thing over here, it releases pressure. So that doesn't work that well. So just make sure it's in the right position for your Instant Pot. Now, if you're using another brand of pressure cooker, there may be slightly different instructions. And that's just up to you to figure that out. And I'm going to trust you. Because if you're watching this, you're probably a grown-up. You're not the five-year-old. If you're a five-year-old, please get your mother or your dad to help you. You need help. Okay, so we're going to put this on the Instant Pot. And I love the noise it makes. I set it, let's see, we put this right there. And then it sets over here. And if you can see, it says up here on my Instant Pot, and there's, there's going to be different ones. So this one is going to say meat and stew. No, we're going to say no. We're going to take manual. I'm taking manual today. Push in manual. And I need to move the numbers up on manual. I did that wrong. Let's start over. Push manual. Push the plus button. And I'm going to bring that up to about, oh, today, let's do 28 minutes. So it's going to cook at pressure for 28 minutes. The first thing will happen is the water will heat up. Then it will be basically a boiling water. And that pressure of the boiling will push that little valve up to seal it. Then for the next 28 minutes, it will cook. And at the end, the heat will be reduced. And what will happen is that the pressure will release very slowly. And that's the way we're going to do it. It's called natural pressure release. If you're in the Instant Pot community, you know about that stuff. So beyond that, right now, the best thing for me to do is to take it easy for a little while, you know, because quite frankly, Santa's on vacation and he likes to take it easy sometimes. I've got that one night a year where I have a big and important job. Oh, it's, it's logistics, 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 and well, there's a lot of milk and cookies. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about the cookies another time, but just remember, Santa's trimming down and uh, it's okay. Santa used to smoke years ago and he doesn't smoke anymore. And now Santa is going to get trim because he likes to be fit and healthy. And you know what? Mrs. Claus doesn't mind a bit. Okay, that's it for this first part. And we're going to come back for the next part in a little while after our soybeans are cooked. Then I'll talk to you about how we handle it from there. Welcome back. We're here to part two. If you'll look at my Instant Pot, you notice that it says L039. That means it has been finished cooking 39 minutes ago. And I'm going to turn the button there to turn it off. Now, I look on the top, which you can't see very well from where you are, but the, the little silver button is down, which means that the pressure has released naturally. So I'm going to turn this this way and then lift it carefully, drip the water back inside. And normally I would set it about right here. And I forgot to get one thing, the, uh, the, hot, the hot pads. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go back here, take some paper towels. This is called improvisation. You didn't think Santa could improv. Well, Santa is smart. I've got some cute little mitts that go on the sides of the Instant Pot pot, but I don't have to use them all the time. I could just use this today. So here we go. This is what I've cooked. I've got a, a bowl here, the same one I had them in before. I'm going to use that for draining. But before I drain it, I'm going to take out, remember I had the little cup? I'm going to take out and pour a little bit of the fluid in there. Maybe, let's just call it, you know, three or four ounces, something like that. And I think you can see that here. So it's just uh, barely in the shot. 
So then the rest of it, I'm going to use my strainer again. Remember our strainer? Put that in the sink. I'm going to take this back and pour the rest of the fluid off into the sink. My improvised straining technique is burning my fingers a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it all best I can. And we'll set that here for now. Okay, enough clunky noises. So what I've got, I've got my beans here. My beans are pretty warm because they've been in that nice hot water. So I'm going to have another interruption while they cool off. And uh, we're going to get them to cool off, and then we will inoculate them with the contents of this that I got at the Japanese, or the, I should say the Asian grocery store. So that step being done, Santa wishes you keep on doing the right thing and uh, keep on being nice, but especially because, because it does something for your own soul. Bless your hearts. See you in a little bit. Welcome back. We're here for our next step. Now I've got my fluid that I used when I made the, uh, the cooked beans and I saved off a little bit of it. I got my cooked beans, got my spoon, and I got my Pyrex bowl. How beautiful that is. Oh, that's a gorgeous one. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take the bowl here, we're going to put the beans in the bowl. Now they have cooled off nicely, so we don't have to worry about them killing the bacteria by too much heat. And that was my concern before. So I've got my, my inoculating strain. We're going to open up this little plastic package. And you notice on here, they gave me a teeny tiny little, well, maybe I'll show it to you on the close-up camera. They gave me a teeny tiny little packet of mustard to go with it. That is one of my secrets. <laughs> so here is the package. And there's a piece of, looks like plastic here. This is why I want the, the chopsticks. Because I need to kind of edge this little wrapper paper away from the beans. Again, these beans were commercially prepared in Japan with the natto bacteria. And if you start to look at it, you start to see this stringy stuff. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the stringy stuff to make our, our natto. So I'm going to mix this in with my cooked beans. And it's nice if you get a chance to make sure that this gets completely thawed out. Because otherwise they kind of stick together a lot. Now, if you'll notice, they still stick together. Well, we're going to be mixing this. This is the reason I saved off the cooking fluid. So I'm going to take my spoon. I'm going to take a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And I'm going to keep on mixing this together. And basically, what we're really trying to do is inoculate all of the cooked beans with the ones that have the, the natto from Japan. This is kind of like a, an immigrant, you know what I'm saying? Of course, because Santa works all over the world, and believe me, I do, <laughs> then we have to be able to work together, taking the best of each culture and sharing with other people. So, I don't know, I guess I have to say I do kind of like the North American cookies, if you know what I'm saying about cookies. There is one issue with cookies, but we won't talk about that today. We're going to be kind. <laughs> Just have fun. All right, so it's starting to mix together pretty nicely. I'm going to go with a little more on my cooking fluid. And I find that if I get just the right mixture, it works pretty darn well. So we're looking at about eight little spoonfuls. And I'm using a very official amount here. It's called whatever that soup spoon holds. That's the amount I'm using. But you can tell it's kind of a couple of ounces at the most. 
So I'm really doing a nice job of mixing that together. And uh, just trying to inoculate all of the surfaces of the beans. And the fluid helps do that. So I'm going to call that right for now. And we're going to give my chopsticks a rest. Now, remember, we've got our bowl. That's the, this is the stainless steel bowl that, that comes with the Instant Pot. You can hear that nice noise. And in order to properly set this up, I need to, I'm, I choose to put in two cups of water into the Instant Pot. So I've got my half cup measure. I've got my water. Remember, we've got water that's friendly to bacteria, meaning it's not chlorinated anymore. There's a nice little filter. And that's a cup and a half and two cups. All right. Got two cups of water. I've got my little uh, thing that holds the bowl off the surface of the bottom of it so the water has a chance to heat without um, making the bowl float in it. I'm setting that in here. In fact, I'm going to do this so you can really see better. Take my bowl out again. Set it here. I think you can see into it a little bit. If not, I'll just tip it a little so you can see. Then I'm going to set my natto in there. But first, I've got a job to do. I'm going to move this out of the way. And we're going to take and have some fun. Now this is the clear plastic wrap I told you about before. And we're going to take and we're going to pull some out of this container. Now, one of the reasons why Santa usually stays out of the kitchen, because I'm not terribly coordinated with everything. So I'm going to put this on top of the bowl. I'm just going to kind of hold it loosely to the edge. So there's this nice surface here, and I've got my toothpicks. Now I've got enough toothpicks in this box to make about a bazillion pounds of, or kilograms or whatever unit you want to make of natto. So I might use it for other reasons, like picking my teeth, but not right now. And it's not very pleasant to see that online, on camera. So what I'm going to do is just start poking holes in the plastic. And you can have fun with this. I could sing a song like, uh, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride or poke holes in my plastic. Something like that. Okay, so now we've done the poking, a bunch of holes. And you notice, you can count how many I did. It's whatever number I'd made. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently ease this down onto the surface of the beans. So that there isn't a lot of air between the plastic and the beans. Now there's a little bit of air in there, but it's not as much as we had before. So now I'm tucking all of the plastic inside of the edge of the bowl, inside the rim. And I'm going to take another sheet of plastic and we're going to open this up and put some more across the top. And this time we're going to stretch it out and leave it stretched out. So again, I've got my, my plastic sitting on top of the bowl, on top of the other piece of plastic. I'm going to go back and jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride a one horse open sleigh. Hey. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> that is my secret, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. So we've got that. It's all prepared. Now, I know some people might want to make natto by like sterilizing everything. I'm trying to get bacteria to grow. Why should I sterilize stuff? And besides, I'm Santa. It's hard for me to make mistakes, or if I do make a mistake, it's hard for me to admit it. Just saying. Okay, so this goes in our bowl, minus this piece of paper. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to put that in our bowl on top of the, the rack and put this into the Instant Pot. 
that wasn't hard, was it? So I'm going to put the cover on like I did before, making sure that the pressure valve is in the right place. But we're not going to go to pressure this time. We're going to just turn on the yogurt setting, yogurt. And I've got it set for 17 hours, but we're actually going to do 30 hours. So I'm going to do 17 and I'm going to do some more after that ends. That's just my choice. If you haven't reset that in the past, you'll probably end up with, they'll say 24. I like to go to 30. It's just my choice. We've got the refrigerator running, so I'm going to cut this short and say, come back tomorrow. Because 30 hours is tomorrow. We'll see you soon. And Santa loves you, and I always will. Tis the off season. Will it be natto or nice? Let's go. It's exciting news. Today we have yogurt. Not really yogurt. What this is trying to say, my Instant Pot is trying to tell me that it's all done doing the fermenting stuff to make natto. And that's what we're having this morning for a little snack. Now I've got the Instant Pot. When I use the yogurt setting, there's no pressure that builds up, so there's no need to release pressure. So you just take the, the top and just turn it off and you're done. Notice a little water's going out there because it's moist in there. I'm just going to set that over here. I just want to, you to understand that I had to add a little time because it was the middle of the night when it just went through the 30 hours. And I also found out that I could set the timer for 30 hours. I thought it was limited to 24, but it's not. So that's the truth. So this has had an extra eight hours or so to uh, ferment. So let's see what it looks like. So I'm lifting out our pot of beans. Look at them, oh, I should say, look at those beans. <laughs> it is not nice for Santa to have uh, colloquial English, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and I do still have a spoon got my little packet of spicy mustard and I got my chopsticks here so what I'm going to do is peel back the the top layer of the plastic remember we had two layers and go down to the bottom and notice what's happening when I lift up can you see that the beans are sticking to the plastic now what would happen if I got in here with my I got a nice plate hiding here next to us I got in here and looked at the beans. You see all those strings? Those strings are what we're looking for in the natto. So I'm going to put some on my plate. But first, I'm going to take the, the way I usually have natto in the morning. I have, from, uh, I have sprouted some broccoli seeds. And of course, I like to put them on my plate. How much do I get? I have no idea. I'm saying I get about that much. Maybe a little more, a little less. And then I use a spoon usually and plate some of these wonderful natto beans with their natto slickery stuff on the outside. Now for now, I'm going to go ahead and cover this back over, cover this back over, because the people that are the experts at Natto usually say that it's nice to refrigerate this for a while, you know, kind of turn it into something they say that, that they call it the fifth flavor, umami flavor. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my bowl of Natto and put it in the refrigerator. Now, some people say, I've heard this on the interwebs, that natto needs to sit in there for another seven days to get extra good, whatever that is. I can't wait that long. Okay, and I also do not find that this amount of mustard, although it is a spicy mustard that they include, is enough. So I just take regular, ordinary, traditional yellow mustard and use that as my topping. 
Now, especially for people that say that they don't like the flavor, but they're really talking about that slick texture because the flavor is similar to what you get in Colby cheese. If you like Colby cheese from Wisconsin, you'll like natto. At least if you tell your mind that's what you're eating, it'll be fine. Because a lot of has, you know, this stuff has to do is, is all about what we're thinking when we're eating. I could say this plate of natto beans here is really a chocolate chip cookie. Well, it doesn't look like a chocolate chip cookie. And I don't see any chocolate chips in it, so that's why I'm saying it's going to be a hard deal. I'm going to take some mustard. Let's see if it comes out without squirting all over. So I, I put on a fair amount of mustard. And because of what's in mustard, you don't have to be afraid to use as much as you want. Mm. Broccoli seeds are great. Proud of So mustard basically has mustard seed in it. It's got turmeric to give it a yellow color. It's got some vinegar. It might have a little salt and maybe some water. But there's no sugar added. So quite frankly, whether you're keto or plant-based or, you know, you're carnivore. Well, I wouldn't fit carnivore unless you like mustard on your carnivore. Whatever it is, the way you eat, even the standard American diet, mustard is not a bad food. It's good for you. So I'll get my chopsticks out just to prove that Santa can eat volumes of natto and enjoy it. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I'm going to talk with food in my mouth. It's against the rules, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm Santa. <laughs> so, what we've got here is two chemicals that are in this little bit of food. One is called glucoraphanin. And there's an enzyme in the uncooked broccoli sprouts called sulfur. No, I'm sorry, it's uh, it's uh, let's see glucoraphanin myrosinase, that's the enzyme. And the myrosinase converts when we chew and break it all up and put it together in our mouth. The myrosinase converts it to sulforaphane. Now, if you want to know about sulforaphane, why it's good for you, you got to, you got to visit Rhonda Patrick's channel. She, I think it's found my fitness. She does a great job of explaining. And Santa's, well, I used to think I was good at explaining toys. Well, in today's world, Santa can barely keep up with all the toys. So, if you ever wanted a dolly for Christmas or a teddy bear, Santa's pretty good at that kind of stuff, but mm. the biochemistry, Santa might have to leave to somebody else to talk about. But just to say, you know, this is a delicious way to eat it. Healthy, you get the, a little bit of protein from the soybeans. You also get um, fiber. And fiber makes everything come out all right. Mm. Well, mm. let me just explain one more thing about Santa. Sometimes Santa does not stay at the North Pole. Sometimes he gets to come south. And you noticed the other day, when I was walking back here, I got short pants on. <laughs> That's really cool. Anyway, I just want you to think about natto. It might help you, your bones to get strong, keep strong. So when you get old, they don't get brittle and break easy. It might help keep your circulation working better. There's some chance that the osteocalcin that it affects may also work with your other hormones in your body to help control insulin, but we don't know a lot about that yet. But we're waiting to find out. And the third thing is that this tastes nice. It's healthy. It is not a sugary food. If you are into sugar, and Santa is into sugar one night a year only. I'll, you know, 
people always trying to get a hold of Santa. So here's the deal. We've got a food that's good for you, that tastes pretty fair. I mean, who doesn't like mustard? And that helps you be strong. Now that's a good deal. There's also something called PQQ in, in natto. I don't know, I have an idea what it does. And there's the natto enzyme, which natozyme they call it. Supposed to help other things. I have no idea again. But just to say this is a good food, hurts hurts nobody, makes everybody happy, <laughs> especially Santa. Remember, Santa loves you, and I always will. And Santa loves Natto too. Ho, 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 or no, no, no. Tis the off season where Santa shows that he knows more than toys, cookies, and milk. He shows you some new stuff, learns some things himself, or has a good conversation to share. Let him know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe so you don't miss his next adventure and write to him at santaoffseason at gmail.com.